A little while back, Naomi and I went to Puerto Rico with, with the boys, and we had a, a great time. Beautiful place, lots to do. Well, Naomi and I went on an adventure, and that adventure saw me losing my wallet. Uh, we were driving around, and, and all of a sudden, I don't know, like, I don't know what happened. I forget if I stopped and I like went to pay for gas or I didn't have my wallet, which meant I didn't have my driver's license, which I needed to get on the plane to go back. Didn't have any money. I didn't even have a credit card. So panic kind of set in like, oh no, what's going to happen? So like we're searching frantically, like we've got to find this thing. Um, because someone lost it. Mm. Well, we didn't find it. So I was like, oh, I gotta call up the credit card company and, and cancel my credit card because maybe someone stole it and they're buying a bunch of stuff on Amazon right now. So I called and canceled that, but didn't solve the problem of what do I do with no money and no driver's license. It was a bad situation. I know I hate losing anything. It makes me feel awful. It's the worst. You hate losing stuff. I hate losing stuff. Well, God doesn't like losing things either. And there's a wonderful truth in the Bible about God. It's about God's love for people. Even though they don't deserve it, God loves people anyway. And so when we look closely at God, we're going to see that he takes no pleasure in the death of people being separated when they're separated from him. Actually, the tr beauty of the gospel is that Jesus, God, wants lost people to be found. And so we're in Luke chapter 15 again this week, and next week we'll be also in Luke chapter 15. Some three wonderful parables about Jesus. And as we start the first two verses, it gives us the context where Jesus is hanging around with with people who were well known for being lost. They were sinners. They were far away from God. And Jesus was being criticized for it. And so he's told three, three parables to kind of get across the point. Last week, we saw that the point, it, really the big overall point of all three of these, the lost people matter to God. They're valuable to, to God. They matter. And so today we, we're going to unpack the the lost coin. So let's pick it up. Luke chapter 15. We're going to read verse 8. Remember, this is right after the lost sheep. He says, Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Won't she light a lamp and sweep the entire house to search carefully until she finds it? So instead of a lost sheep, we're dealing with a, a lost coin. Now, when we think of coins as Americans, we think a lot of times of pocket change, things that aren't incredibly valuable. You know, the times where Caden will see a penny on the ground, uh, he doesn't typically put it in his pocket. What he likes to do is throw it at his brother Zion. There's a lot of fun for Zion who usually throws it back and they throw it until it gets lost and they don't look for it because, again, not valuable to, to either one of them. That is not the kind of coin that's being talked about here that this woman lost. She lost a drachma. And a drachma was equivalent to a day's wage. So if you worked a day, you get paid a drachma. One coin for one day. So what's that worth for us today? I googled it. Google told me, uh, for Americans, that's about $200. Yeah, you can see why this woman's like, I gotta find this coin! worth a lot of money and it's probable that this coin was tied in with with marriage as well so it was probably more valuable than just the monetary value to her so it says here at the moment that she lost it what does she do you can see she's going to light a lamp because it's probably dark in the house not a whole lot of windows uh, she's going to sweep the entire house search carefully she's going to tear the house apart until she would find this coin why? Because this coin's not going to find itself. Okay? It has no uh, ability to do so. So someone has to find it. Recently, we lost some keys at our house. I noticed, I looked through the key ring, and the keys weren't there. So I thought, huh, that's odd. 
So I went to my desk, is usually if it's not there, it's in my desk. It's not there either. So I asked the boy, do you know where it is? No. Do you know where it is? No. Naomi, do you know where it is? No. Huh. Well, that's not good. We need these keys. They're important to us. So I began looking. And I'm like, all right, you're a whole family begins searching the house. We were tearing apart. Like this is hours long. Like this is a a serious search, tearing apart the couch cushion, not actually tearing apart, but you know, looking under the couch cushion, under things. I ended up looking in dirty shoes, uh, in cracks behind stuff, like uh, anywhere. Uh, maybe it was still in the car. So we went out the car, probably four or five times doing the same thing. Like, because we just couldn't seem to find them. Our whole focus was trying to find these keys. And that's what you do when you lose something of value. You search for it because it has value to you. You want it found. And just because something's lost doesn't mean it loses its value. So this coin was lost didn't mean it's, it lost its value. And lost people don't lose their value just because they're lost. Again, that was emphasized last time, is that people matter. They are valuable. God thinks so. So let's continue to see how the story ends. Short, short parable here today. And when she finds it, she will call her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels, even when one sinner repents. These verses are very similar to what we looked at in the last one in verses 5 through 7. So this lost coin is found. There are smiles, high fives. There's joy, celebration, calling in the, the family. Hey, I found it! Yeah! You know, just this kind of idea of woo, this party that's that's going on. When lost things are found, it is a good time. It's it's like well, yes. And so we're back to Puerto Rico. We're looking everywhere. I could have like it could be. We were driving. I could have left it on the other side of the island. Who knows? So when I f I found it. I was the one who lost it anyway. But when I found it, I'm like, hey, I found it. And we're calling up the people that I, I called and, and said, you know, hey, we found it. Yeah, let's celebrate. You know, celebrate. No, anyway, uh, it, there's a good time that's, that's had when lost things of value are found. And so we can kind of relate to the joy here that this woman has. There's joy in lost things being found. But again, Jesus' story isn't about a coin. It's not about things. It's about people. Let's read verse 10 again. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. And so here's the main point. Is that heaven celebrates when the lost are found. Heaven celebrates when the lost are found. And I think this point is so huge because we have an opportunity to get the, the curtain of heaven pulled back. We kind of glimpse in, take a look at what's, what's going on there. It says, even the angels notice when one person turns from doing his own thing to doing things God's way. When just one, how big a deal is this? There's, it's like there's a party in heaven when someone who was lost becomes found. When someone who's far away draws near to God. Can you imagine that there was a celebration in heaven of you when you turned to Jesus? That's it. It's really an, an incredible thought. That you are noticed. That you are valuable. And you are celebrated Think of the, the, the song, Amazing Grace. I'm not going to sing that one. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, 
but now I see. So in this story, we see that the lost coin represents lost people. If that's the case, who's the woman? Who does the woman represent? Well, the woman represents God. Jesus painted a, a pretty incredible picture here about God. Think of, you know, talk about amazing grace. God is active in helping lost people get found. So he's like a diligent woman. Or last week, like a good shepherd. Or next week, like a loving father. We get to see God's heart, Jesus' heart. It's for people. And so I think that challenges us. Is our heart for people, for lost people to be found? Because we know them. They're around us. We, they're our neighbors. They're our friends. We care about them. We want them to be found as well. So what are we doing to help that day forward? Well, can I challenge you? Can I challenge you to pray. If you want to do more than one, you can do that. But my challenge is pray for one, one of your friends, or one of your relatives, one of your neighbors. Pick one and pray for them this week. Pray for them to come to a personal faith in Jesus. Pray for them to understand the goodness of Jesus, what he accomplished for them on the cross and through his resurrection so that he, they too can have new life. Pray for, pray for them to understand their need of, of Jesus. Pray that God would help you to, to love that person well, and then that God would save that person's soul. Think about joy. Think about, like, that is the ultimate, like, this is what life is, is about people coming to faith and you being a part of that, what's better than that? So I would encourage you to keep banging on the door of heaven. Not, I, I know the challenge is one week, but do it this week and then the week after that and then the next one. And one day, one day, hopefully soon, you'll get to celebrate with the angels in heaven as your friend who was lost is now found. That is something to look forward to. Let me pray. Father, once again, we're grateful for Jesus, for his words, for his parable. God, I thank you that your heart is for people and that you want them found, that you care, that you build a bridge. And so I pray for all of us here to, to value what you value and to celebrate what you celebrate. Imagine one day the celebration will be great as we all come together in heaven and see, make much of you and what you did in changing people's lives for eternity. So we thank you for your amazing grace in Jesus' name. Amen.